All right, today we're going to be doing a beginner's guide to testing continuity and resistance. When you're first starting out with a multimeter, after you've selected which one that you want to get, uh, this is the first place that you're going to want to start with testing and understanding how to perform these tests. Make sure that when you're making these measurements, you're looking for ohms and continuity on your hot lead port for your meter. It's going to be important for setup. If you have it in the wrong port, you're going to screw some things up. This will also be covered under using a manually selected meter and an auto ranging meter. What's the difference? Well, you're going to see on a manually selected meter, we're going to be focusing on this area here. Ohms is going to be this symbol on your meter. And we can see here for this manually selected meter, there's two mega ohms, 200 kilo ohms, 20 kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms, 200 ohms, and then lastly, that little speaker symbol is going to be for continuity. On an auto ranging meter, we just have two different settings. We have resistance and continuity. What's the difference between resistance and continuity? Well, resistance is going to give you a resistive value. Okay, this is saying 1 mega ohms. Okay, whereas continuity it's going to produce a tone and it may or may not give you a value depending on the meter and it's going to have a range. It's saying the resistance is too high for this to say that there's continuity in it. Okay, continuity is meant for lower resistive loads. The first thing that we want to keep in mind when measuring continuity and resistance is that it needs to be done on a dead circuit. So all the power needs to be shut off and disconnected before we make a resistive and continuity measurements. And I'll tell you why. And that's because when we measure resistance on our meter, we're actually outputting a small amount of voltage. So like you can see for this meter, when it's trying to read a resistive value, it's outputting 1.7 volts of DC. So you can't use voltage to measure resistance where there's voltage present. Now some meters are nice and will tell you if a circuit is live when you're trying to make a resistive measurement. Most of them aren't going to have that function but I'll go ahead and show you. I've got a 12 volt, I have a 12 volt power supply here. You can see that on my meter. But if I move it to a resistive measurement and I try to measure the same thing, just gives me an open. The meter's totally confused. The voltage coming from the output of this is confusing it. So you need to make sure that it's a completely dead circuit. So let's go ahead. We're gonna start with continuity and show you kind of what continuity can be used for how it can also get you in some trouble. Got two different examples here. A misconception that you're gonna think when you start out is that when you're reading continuity on a wire, we showed as little as one or two ohms there. The problem is there's a huge cut in this wire. It only takes the contact of one little strand in this wire to test positive for continuity. So continuity is really just letting you know there's some kind of electron flow happening. It doesn't mean that the wire is good, just means that there's something available for flow to take place. And you can see even though this wire is really damaged, our numbers were dancing all over the place, but we still got it down to like one or two ohms. Another situation where continuity can get you in trouble is a situation like this this one's reading perfectly okay it's not dancing around at all problem that wire isn't properly secured to its terminals and that could cause a lot of intermittent issues so again that's somewhere where if we're just testing for continuity it can get us into trouble there's other tests that we can do to check for those types of scenarios let's talk about some places where testing for continuity can be really helpful that can be with fuses we have two identical fuses here one is good one is bad let's go ahead and take some measurements with continuity to see Okay, I have a complete open, okay. 
but with this one showing zero resistance and I have a tone. It's telling me this fuse is good. Fuses, 99.9% .9 of the time, when they fail, they completely fail and they're meant to fail completely open. So when we're testing fuses, we can test at the blades or there's gonna be terminals at the top that you can put your probes onto the terminal, or excuse me, if the fuse is still in the terminal block and that way you don't have to pull every single fuse and then you can lose track, but you can kind of see what that looks like. Okay, that bad. That one says that it's good. So there's an example of that. Now let's go ahead and talk about resistance. Resistance is when, say we know we have continuity. Okay, let's take this load. Okay, we, we have continuity. We want to know how much electrical resistance is a part of our load, and that can be handy for troubleshooting. Coming back here, it's about 0.8, 0.9 ohms. Let's take this motor as another example. Okay, it's also showing about 0.8 ohms. So the difference between continuity and resistance testing is resistance testing is going to give us a very precise value where continuity is probably going to be to the nearest whole number and it's only going to be up to a certain range. When we have our meter to ohms, it'll give us, you know, mega ohms, kilo ohms, ohms, and milli ohms, a very large range. And I'm going to give you an example. We have three different resistors here and I'm going to show you the difference between using an auto ranging meter and a manually selective meter. No matter what value of ohm I have, my meter is going to be able to recognize it and give me a value. This is saying that it's one mega ohm. The capital M is for mega, little m is for milli. Okay, this is a 10 ohm resistor. This is the big advantage of having an auto ranging meter. Okay, and this is a 47 kilo ohm resistor. So we'll put that in order because that'll be handy for our manually selecting ohm meter. Okay, so on a manually selecting meter, it's going to be a little bit different. We have some things to pay attention to because this is going to be our resolution. Okay, and this is saying on this setting, it can read up to 2 mega ohm, up to 200k, 20k, 2k, and 200. Okay, as we refine our our resolution will get a more and more detailed and accurate reading but if we go too low let's say I have a 47 K ohm resistor and I'm on my 20 K setting on my meter it's gonna show an OL and that basically represents that it's out of range we're on the two mega ohm resistor setting and I have a one mega ohm resistor perfect very similar to our last reading if I had selected 200k there's that ol it's telling us it's out of range it can't read it now let's go down to our 47k ohm 47k but if i refine my resolution now i'm on the 20k setting and i'm trying to read something that's above 20k again we have an ol finally let's look at our 10 ohm resistor okay i'm on a 20k setting i have a 10 ohm resistor it's showing 0 0.00 or 0.01k so let's try it on the 2K setting, 0.01K. So if we took our K, that's three zeros, right? Or three placeholders, one, two, three. So if we move that decimal place over three spots, put it on the back here, that would represent a 10 ohm. Now, if we go to our final setting, we have a tone indicating continuity and we're also showing 10 ohms. That's kind of the main difference when making these types of measurements between an auto ranging and a manually selecting meter that you need to look out for. So those are the basics of reading continuity and resistance. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks.